Hello, theme park enthusiasts, and welcome back to Planet Coaster. And horror fans, welcome back to my Welcome to Dairy Park. So, in the last episode, we finally got done with the underground section, I think. We're all good on that. We're leaving that alone now. Now we're going to get into the actual ride itself some. So, in this episode, we're going to focus especially on this section here, and we're going to see how far we get, really. Um, the goal is to get through this section, at least, where we're going to be basically designing sort of the first scene of the ride. Uh, we'll probably sort of box in this area on both sides here. And so the first scene, of course, is going to be the iconic scene from the book and from both film adaptations of the story, which is Georgie's death. Now, a couple things to note on this. For one, Planet Coaster doesn't exactly provide the most horror content possible, including on the workshop. So I am going to have to use what is available. I'm going to have to make it work as best I can. So it's not going to be perfect. I admit that outright. And I do apologize for people who aren't thrilled with the way it comes out looking. But it is the best that I can do inside of Planet Coaster. So you are going to have things like there is no small boy in a raincoat. It just doesn't exist. There's also no little uh, boat. So I'm going to have to create the scene to be as symbolic of that as I can, while also considering the ride itself. If this was a real ride, I definitely would have some kind of animatronic of the boat at least. Uh, might not have Georgie because that might get a little bit too gruesome for the ride and such. But this first scene is really going to start highlighting why I say this ride is a soaker. Um, it's very intentional. I want this ride to just soak the guests as they're going along. So we are going to do that starting pretty much from moment one here in this first room. Then we'll see where we get to. The plan is, as I said, we're going to go along through some of the important events of the children's lives leading up to them going into the house on Niebold Street. And then we're going to have the drop. Now this drop is sort of symbolic in a way because this drop is the end of childhood into the adulthood portion. So pretty much everything from here on is supposed to be adulthood. There is the memories of the monsters down below, but those are gonna, I'm gonna consider memories. Everything else that's gonna be seen up here is gonna be sort of adulthood, as well as the final battle down there is adulthood. So this first part that we're gonna be working on first is the childhood portion. If you haven't read the book or seen the movies, I do recommend it. Uh, I think the original movie with Tim Curry, or the, I guess it's technically a film adaptation for television, is the more accurate to the book, I feel. But that being said, both movie versions lack some of the details from the book. I highly recommend reading the book. I think it's the best of the three options. I think Bill Skarsgård did a great job of making a very evil Pennywise. And I think that Tim Curry made a Pennywise that was both sort of almost wholesome and at the same time evil. So there's trade-offs to both versions, the visual versions of the text. That being said, I still do recommend the novel as the top one. But that's neither here nor there. We're working on an amusement park in Planet Coaster. So with all that being said, let's jump in and see what we're able to build in this episode. And then at the end, I'll come back and talk you through it.
All right, welcome back guys. <laughs> As you've seen, I've done quite a bit of work, but it's all contained pretty much within this box. We'll get to this here in a little bit. But first thing I wanted to do was set up sort of the skeleton for the building itself. I wanted tunnels that enter and exit the building, and especially a tunnel that leads into the area that we're gonna talk about most here. Then I wanted a tunnel that leads out of it. Different materials, but same premise. So this area will probably be one of the last things I do as far as this ride. We'll see where this goes. I did knock down the walls and stuff right now just because it makes my life easier while I'm trying to get this sort of set up. Now for some reason the doors I put in did disappear. I'm going to have to put those back in. Probably do that at the beginning of the next episode. So once we get through the tunnel, we'll go through this door here and suddenly we are on a street in Derry, Maine, also inspired by Bangor, Maine. Uh, so with that, I wanted to look at architecture that was from the area and I wanted something that's going to be at least as best I can appearing to be from the 1980s. So I didn't want to go with anything ultra modern. I felt like this would have been almost cutting edge at the time, so I just did a little building of it over there. Wanted cars that were either older or fairly new for the 1980s, so I went with these two. And then we have our one guest here that is hidden behind this tree, very intentionally. You probably saw me in the video lining myself up with the ride here, because I think about it in the aspect of actual guests riding on it. And even without the smoke and everything, you wouldn't be able to see Pennywise until you're around that corner. And that's exactly what I wanted. Uh, smoke is a little bit much, but it's also paused right now, so I think that's having a part to play in it. Now, as I said, I didn't have anything like a, a little boat or a boy in a rain slicker, so I did the best I could. I had found this blood splatter that was on the workshop, and I customized it a bit to fit into this area. But as I said, I also wanted this to feel like it is an actual street. So we put in all the houses and everything here. Um, looks like this light, it shouldn't be on. And I don't believe it is technically on. I want to make sure it's off because the power was out in Derry, Maine at this point. So I want it to be fairly dark because that's the way it would be. So then I went ahead and covered everything with the blackout curtains yes things stick through and i'm perfectly fine with that because this is sort of the inner box for the ride there is going to be an entire building that's going to go around all of this the entire town is going to be laid out here as sort of a cover that covers the main rides here so you won't even see this house and such once that's in place the how the buildings are going to run closer to the sidewalk and such which is why we're back from the sidewalk a decent amount here and such and then here we're basically going to have a building that comes right to here and then this is just going to be sort of pipe that comes out as far as the uh into the waterway that goes through town now with this somebody had done a wonderful job of the recreation of Niebold's great house from the remake of the movie i felt it was perfect i do need Niebold street for a scene that's going to be going on so i did want to put it in there are going to be adjustments here though as you saw i pretty much ripped the entire back of the building off and that's because of the fact that this is going to be a scene in the ride it is not just going to be sort of a standalone type of thing there's this cave here i don't really care about it one way or the other because it's going to be hidden from the riders and from the town overall so it just exists, basically. Uh, but with this, I am going to have to make the ride go upwards some here to get into the house. I'm not doing that just yet, though, because of the fact that I need to move this house still, I feel. I figure what I'm going to do in the next episode, I can't do this area because I don't know how much area I have yet until I get this scene set up. And by this scene, I mean all the way over to here and including the house. So what I'm going to do in the next episode probably is start working from the back here, the end of the scene, and moving back through the house in this direction. Then when I get there, we'll go ahead and uh, move the house where it needs to be. Once that house is set in place, then I can see how much room I have here and decide which scene I want to put in in this area. The other thing I do want to get done fairly soon here is I want to sort of get this all taken care of. Right now it's just sort of 
walls made of stone. This is actually gonna be concreted in, so I do need to do all of that work, and I will get to that here, hopefully in the next episode or two. Might even do that before I go ahead and start with the, uh, the house. But those are the plans for the future. Then as I said, once all of this is done, we will go ahead and box it in, and so you won't see it because of the town itself. The one scene I'm sort of still going back and forth on is if I'm gonna put a scene over here or not. I'm really unsure about it right now. The amount of work that this took, I mean, this was probably, you're seeing it in a sped up version, but this probably took me six or seven hours just to get this bit of scene done. Concerning what's underground, and then the work I still have to do on the scenes over here, this ride is gonna be the, is a ride that probably has taken me as long as some parks have taken me. And with this ride, there's also the setup of the other rides that are gonna go on in this area. They are technically, in my opinion, part of this ride though, because it's all about the scenery for this ride. So with that, we'll have to see if I do the scene over there or not. One thing I keep in mind is I don't have letters that are bloody the way I would want them for the scene that I want to do over there. So we'll have to sort of play around with it and decide if that scene's going to happen or not. As I said, there most likely will be something here, unless for some reason I find when I do this that the house needs to be moved way up here or something. If it does, then there won't be a scene between them. My guess is, though, that the house is going to move back this direction some, but I need to play it out from this end first. So we're going to see from this end, then we will sort of make our decision on where the house is located. So with that in mind, that's what we're going to do in the next episode. For now, though, if you enjoyed what we did in this episode, please go ahead and click that like button. If you've not already, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon, so that you're aware when I produce new videos in the future. Thank you, and I hope to see you all again for more of Welcome to Dairy and Planet Coaster.